Today we're going to be checking out the Mingda Magician X, so let's take it out of the box. Looks like we have a fully assembled gantry. Then we've got the base of the printer. And as far as assembly goes, I think we just put this on here. I'm just putting in two screws on either side here. And we'll plug all the wires in and I think we're good to go. So instead of having a drawer, you've just got a little cover panel here that you can stash some tools away in. I just put all the spare parts in there. It looks like this isn't tightened down all the way. So I'm just gonna grab this wrench and adjust this eccentric nut. That was pretty easy. I'll check the bed for looseness. Looks like it's a little loose. So again, come in here and adjust the eccentric nut. This seems very springy. I think it's actually this whole base platform that's moving around a little bit. This metal piece is just bolted directly to this large plastic base. Should be strong enough. I mean, the 3D printer doesn't really exert any force when it's printing stuff. So I think it'll be fine. The extruder and everything is already pre-installed, so that's all good to go. Let's power it up. Boots up nice and quickly. All right, I've got my SD card plugged in. Let's do a leveling routine. All right, and let's watch it do its bed leveling thing. It touches the bed with the hot end. Bilinear leveling done. Click to resume, okay. All right, with leveling complete, I guess I'll just go ahead and start a print. So I've installed the SD card right over here. I'll go to print. SD card. Oh wow, look at that. Uh, looks like you can plug in just a USB flash drive, but I don't have one plugged in right now. Let's try printing the Monkey King. All right, so I didn't put the filament in and it's calling me out, so I'll load up the sample filament that they provided. And we're able to just push some filament out of the end there. I'll just press the resume button. So it looks like this thing is perfectly adhered to the tray. Whatever they're doing to level the bed seems to work pretty well. So we'll just let this print run. So as you can hear, this isn't the quietest printer in the world. Most of the noise is coming from this x-axis stepper motor. So if I wanted to quiet this down, I'd probably put a stepper motor damper on this x-axis. But overall, I'm just going to leave this machine stock because it prints really nicely in its stock configuration. And it's one of those machines that you can just start using and get good results out of it. I just ran out of filament there. So I guess we're done with this print. It's playing a little video game noise for us. There we go. Here's our print. A lot of machines nowadays are coming with the PEI build sheet. With PEI, you'll have more issues with the print coming detached. It's kind of a double-edged sword. When you're done printing, it's really easy to take your parts off, but you can also have issues with the parts coming off as they're printing. With a glass bed, you have a super flat sheet here, and it gets super consistent bed adhesion results. So if you're running an older style machine that has one of these glass beds, don't think that you're missing out on anything. It's actually pretty nice. I mean, this thing is like automatically sticking to the bed just from sitting on it. My first parts weren't coming out very nice on this printer, and that was due to a couple of factors. One is that the extruder is under extruding a little bit. I used this pair of calipers to check the extrusion rates of this machine, and it turned out it was under extruding by about five or six percent. So when I request 100 millimeters to be dispensed, it would only feed in 94 or 95 millimeters of filament. So if you have one of these machines and you do an extrusion calibration and you find the machine is under extruding, reach out to Mingda and they can send you a G-code file that'll help you recalibrate your printer. I just told them that when I'm trying to feed 100 millimeters, it would only feed 95 millimeters and they sent me a G-code file to correct that. I'm gonna run the M92 G-code here. So let me just tap that file and it completes instantaneously. Let me hit confirm and I'll restart the printer. So now to verify that the E-steps are set correctly, let's go to preheat and we'll wait for this to heat up. Now that the hot end is primed, I'm gonna take my calipers, measure out 120 millimeters and mark 120 millimeters on this filament. So this line where the tape is marks 120 millimeters. Using the touch screen, I'm gonna feed 100 millimeters of filament. So I'll just hit load 10 times. All 
All right, and after feeding 100 millimeters, I should be left with 20 millimeters. And if we look at our measurement here, we're left with just about 20 millimeters of filament coming out. So I completely resolved the under extrusion problem. I wish there was a way to change the e-steps per millimeter directly through the touch screen, but Mingdo was more than willing to help me out by sending me some G-code to fix that. So overall, that's not too big of an issue. The other issue that I had with this machine was the Y-axis stepper motor on the back. The pulley that's attached to the stepper motor wasn't tightened down properly. So I was having some weird issues that looked like skip steps where the layers would be shifted. Um, they showed up on this deer print and on this sample print. But I was able to fix that by taking apart this Y-axis stepper motor and tightening up the set screws on the pulley. And the last issue I was having had to do with the lead screws for the Z-axis. They were making quite a bit of noise, so I put some wax-based lubricant on it. Wax-based lubricants won't build up dust over time. If you put oil or grease on those lead screws, dust from your room will build up on it. Just drip a couple of drops on there and let it dry, and it completely resolved any of the noise that I was having. They completely got rid of all of the springs and adjustment screws on the bottom of the bed. That makes this thing a lot easier to use, especially for beginners to 3D printing, because you don't have to worry about that whole bed leveling procedure. That was actually the most annoying thing about learning how to use a 3D printer, and I'm glad they got rid of it. What I like about their implementation of bed leveling is it uses physical contact between the nozzle and the bed to detect the height of the bed. And this is a lot more convenient than other systems that you'll get with a BL touch or a CR touch. If you replace this nozzle with a different one and it's slightly lower or higher, the next time it goes to level the bed, it'll automatically account for that and you won't have to recalibrate the BL touch offset. All right, so that wraps up my thoughts on the Mingda Magician X printer. I think it's a solid printer. You might have some issues with your printer in the shipping process. Um, things might get banged around a little bit and you'll need to fix that. But overall, it's a super easy printer to use and one that I'd recommend for any number of beginner 3D printers. I will say that the Ender 3S1 that I've tested prior had slightly better print quality than this, but where the Mingda wins is ease of use. With the Ender 3S1, you have to do a CR touch bed leveling calibration at the beginning. I have an Ender 3S1 Max that I'm testing now and the bed leveling procedure just won't work at all and it's causing me to not be able to use that machine. So having something with a seemingly simpler bed leveling system that you don't have to do any calibration with right out of the box is an advantage in my opinion. When you compare it to the Ender 3S1, it's a lot easier and simpler to assemble because you don't have any bed leveling knobs, you don't have to separately calibrate the CR touch sensor, and the x-axis carriage comes pre-installed. So that's one less thing that you have to figure out how to put together. Alright, so this is Nathan Builds Robots signing out. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.